Hi guys, Deanne here from Canada Abroad. Thanks for tuning in. And this week on FAQ Friday, we're going to be talking about parental and maternity benefits. So, you know, maternity leave or what kind of leave and benefits you can expect in Canada if you are pregnant or have given birth. Now, it might not be directly related to immigration, but what we're finding is we are getting a lot of questions on this because people are, you know, looking to immigrate. They want to know if I'm pregnant during the process or if I have a baby in Canada, what kind of benefits and leave can I expect? You know, am I going to get any of my salary? Am I going to have to go on unemployment? So they want to know how these things work so that they can, you know, plan ahead. And with Canada, the benefits um, are federal. So it's Canada wide. The only exception is Quebec does have its own system. So what we talk about today is just going to be for the rest of Canada, but not in Quebec. Okay. So the benefits are broken up into maternity benefits and paternity benefits. Now maternity benefits are just in place for people who are pregnant or have given birth. So unfortunately, um, it's not for the dads out there. And with this, it's up to a maximum of 15 weeks that you can claim. And what happens is it basically gets claimed through employment insurance, or in some countries, it might be called unemployment insurance. And with that, you lodge a claim and you can earn 55% of your normal salary while you're on this maternity leave. Now, that being said, the 55% only gets to a certain maximum. So the most you could ever be earning on this benefit is $573 a week for that 15 week period. So there is a cutoff. So you might not be getting, you know, 55% of your salary if you're a really high earner. So these are things that you would want to take into consideration. Now, this is just what the federal government is going to give you. Depending on your employer, they might, and they don't have to, this is what you need to keep in mind, they absolutely do not have to do this, but some employers as part of your benefits package would say, okay, we'll top you up and the federal government's going to pay you 55% of your salary. We will give you a little bit more so that you're earning 80% of your salary. So when you are looking for work, you might want to have that discussion. What is their policy on maternity and paternity benefits so that you can get an idea once you are ready to have a child or adopt a child, what kind of benefits you would be earning. For maternity though, it's just up to 55% that you can expect. Now, parental benefits are in place for the parents of a newborn child or parents who have adopted a child. So this means that both parents can take this leave, but it has to be split. So what that means is if there's a quota on how many weeks you can take, one parent can take that quota or you can split it between the two of you. Now, with parental benefits, there's two different choices that you can make. There's the standard parental benefits and then there's extended. Now, standard, it only allows you to take up to 40 weeks of parental leave and no one parent can take more than 35 weeks. So one parent could take 35 weeks and the other could have five weeks or you could do 20 weeks and 20 weeks. And the other thing to keep in mind is that you can take it together. So if you wanna be on leave 20 weeks together with your child, you can do that, or you can do it one after the other. So it is flexible and you can do that. Now with the standard parental benefits, you would be again getting paid 55% of your normal salary per week and that's only up to a maximum of $573 a week that you could be earning. And then again, you could talk to your employer and see if they do any top up on top of that, but the federal government is only gonna give you that amount. If you choose to go with the extended parental benefits, then you can take up to 69 weeks in total. And no one parent could take more than 61 weeks of that. But again, you could split it between the two of you. You could take it at the same time, one after the other. Um, so it is again, flexible. Now, if one parent decides to take the standard, the other one couldn't take extended. So you both have to claim the same benefit. So either the standard or the extended. Now, if you go on to the extended leave, you're only gonna be earning 33% of your wage. And that is up to a maximum of $344 a week. 
So obviously it's quite a bit less, so they've just extended how much time you could take off, but you're not gonna be necessarily earning more money over the long term. It's just that some people look at how much is childcare gonna cost them during that time, and does it make sense to go back to work early and have to pay that large fee for childcare, or does it make more sense for one of the parents or both of them to stay home and skip that cost for the first year? So, you know, with these numbers, you could sit down and do an evaluation of your salary and what childcare is gonna cost in your area, because areas like Toronto and Vancouver, it can get quite expensive, uh, probably $1,000 or more per month that you would be looking at. So this would allow you to just, you know, do an evaluation and what is gonna work best for you. Now, if you need extra leave, so sometimes, you know, unfortunately there's complications with pregnancy, you might have to go on to bed rest. So that can be covered by the maternity leave, but if that's not enough, you can claim sick leave as well. So there are other benefits um, if you get sick or if your child gets sick or ends up in the hospital after the delivery. So there are different um, benefits in place for this. So if you click in the link below, it's going to take you to the list of all of the different benefits and when those would kick in. The other thing that it's going to explain is not everyone is entitled to take the maternity and paternity benefits depending how long they've been working in Canada. So myself, when I moved back to Canada recently, I was 22 weeks pregnant. And because I was self-employed, I hadn't contribute, uh, hadn't paid enough employment insurance benefits before I had my child. So I was not able to claim any benefits. So I had to go back to work right away or else I wasn't gonna be getting a salary. So if you do click in the link below, it will outline how you meet the requirements to be able to claim these benefits, how many hours you would have to be able to work in Canada before being able to claim anything. Because if you don't reach that milestone before going on leave, you might not be getting any benefits at all. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you go below in the comments, if you have any questions that you would like us to answer for FAQ Fridays, please just leave them there. And we also have a poll going on right now where we have a few questions posted and we want your feedback to see which one you would like answered in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.